Hi everybody, today we are talking about what happens uh, to your pets when they cross over. Um, our own personal experiences with the pets that uh, we have lost and also I'm going to be talking uh, more in detail about what it's like when an individual comes to me for a reading um, and they've lost their pet and what I see on the other side uh, where the pet is and also some discussion in regards to what the angels would like to say you know does your pet have a guardian angel um, where are they what are they doing so I'm going to be talking more in detail more than I really have ever done in regards to your pets crossing over um, our pets crossing over mm -hmm. and Joining me here uh, with me is Alyssa Reynolds. I'm going to be popping her link up top so you can come and check out her YouTube channel as well. Um, we each have a group on Facebook that you can come and check out as well. Um, your group is? The Amethyst Cave. Yep. And you also have a YouTube channel called? The Amethyst Cave. So. <laughs> Easy to remember. Yeah, easy to remember. She has two channels, so Alyssa Reynolds and the Amethyst Cave, and I have, of course, uh, Kristen Davies, and I have another YouTube channel called Lightworkers United, so you can come and check out other Lightworkers content, um, channelings, healings, um, all sorts on that channel, and then, of course, you can come to my group on Facebook called Intuitive Angel Messages, and, um, you know, I've had my own personal experience uh, losing my fur babies and I had at that time long ago I didn't experience anything however I wasn't really searching I was still quite I guess you could say pinched off from the energy that surrounded me um, and that was the stage in life I was at I didn't sense my dog uh, Tuffy, his name was. We called him Tuffy. <laughs> He's a Maltese poodle. He's the cutest thing ever. Oh my gosh. Uh, he was so smart and we called him Tuffy because he thought he was so tough. <laughs> my mom told me once he was like walking along for a walk and growling at a German shepherd and then he walked right into a tree. <laughs> It was the cutest thing ever. So, like, my little boy, when I lost him, it was, like, devastating for me back then. Um, he made it to almost 14 years of age. And I remember just crying my eyes out nonstop for weeks afterwards. It, you just go through your day-to-day -day and the tears just start streaming. It's, it is, uh, you know, similar, I'm sure, to losing, you know, a family member or a child. It is even more so because they're just earth angels I just love them mm -hmm. there's just they just love you unconditionally I mean they are like your child so when it was time and he was gonna cross over and we knew this because the health issues he had were to the point where we needed to uh, put him down and I remember there was no way around it and <clears throat> when he went, I remember saying to Archangel Michael, please take him, take him and take care of him. And so I know he crossed right over um, and I know they're looked after on the other side. So I didn't feel him afterwards, but your story's different. Mm -hmm. So what is your story? Yeah, well... For me, it was the very first cat that I ever had, and I had a really special relationship with him. Mm -hmm. He was um, named Ninja, and <laughs> such a sweet seal point Siamese. Wow. So sweet. And when I was a baby, and in a crib, he used to sneak into the crib and sleep <laughs> with me, <laughs> which got my parents concerned a little bit until they realized that he was just around my head, just protecting me, which had some interesting significance because I've got a bit of a unique brain. <laughs> that 
that he was protecting it and he was always really really close to me and I was the one who uh, would feed him and he'd sit on my lap and yeah we really had a close connection yeah. and it was absolutely devastating when I was 11 years old and it was the first loss that I experienced and by that point he was 17 years old oh my gosh. <laughs> which was amazing, amazing for a cat but um, he was going through so many different health problems yeah. at the time that my parents were like we're sorry but to be kind to him we have to put him down mm. and I still so vividly remember spending an entire day sitting in a chair with him on my lap. I was just hugging him close the whole day. He didn't move either. <laughs> just crying and crying and um, just trying to kind of feel like it's going to be okay, it's going to be okay. And he calmed me down too. And then when he was gone and he'd been taken away to be put down. It started out just in the nights where I'd be going to sleep and just like when I was a baby and like he'd always done, um, even as I was growing up, he slept on the top of my pillow right around my head. He'd always sleep like that. <laughs> even as I was growing up more and more. And after he passed on, I noticed that there was still a feeling of him being there. It was just this soft mm. presence, this energy really that I didn't really connect specifically as an energy at the time beyond just feeling like that's ninja. He's still here. and. It made me feel like um, everything was okay, that he was okay, and he was still there and yeah. looking after me yeah. and reminding me that he was always going to be with, with me. And that continued on and off probably for about six months or so. Wow. Um, and it really, really helped for me to just kind of move past that and then when my parents went and they got two more cats to kind of not take Ninja's place because you can never take the place no. of a particular pet but to kind of bring that presence of just sweet cats <laughs> well <Yeah. laughs> back um, that I was ready to just love those two cats and um, love them just as much as I loved Ninja, though in very different ways because each of them are all such unique little individuals. Yeah. Different little personalities, yeah. different energy, and mm -hmm. they help us with our energy, they help lift us up. And um, <clears throat> I think just animals are my all time favorite. Um, in this experience on earth, I just, I love them beyond measure, really, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, I know that some of the people that have come to me ask, um, will m the soul of my pet, uh, incarnate into the next animal that, um, I, I, uh, own or that comes to me and <clears throat> what some of the time it does. Uh, is the answer that I received from the angels. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes what I see is the animal won't leave, um, won't leave. Uh, and so I, I listen to the angels and they tell me that they're patiently waiting for when the animal is ready to cross over because it's not ready yet and it wants to spend more time um, here on the uh, earth plane and they just patiently wait until the animal uh, is going to cross over and they also mm -hmm. say that it's really important for the animal to cross over um, and so 
<clears throat> I think um, I'm, I didn't. I never have asked why it's important for the animal to cross over, but I'm assuming in order to transmute any density um, and just you know get get a respite before maybe coming back into another uh, body, another vessel. So um, some of the things that I've seen uh, on the other side is, <clears throat> well, they've shown me and they've also described to me there are specific locations, um, if we want to call it in heaven or a heavenly realm, <clears throat> high vibrational, extremely high vibrational. So where I see the dogs, for example, are they are running around in a vast open uh, field of wild grasses with like flowers and, and it's just beautiful. And I see some trees and I see um, they project <clears throat> the image of uh, quite large angels floating just above the ground. And these angels are looking after the dogs in this location. And what they're doing is throwing balls for the dogs. <laughs> And the dogs are so happy. Like, they're so happy. That's so sweet. I mean, they're always happy here mm -hmm. most of the time. I mean, 99.9% .9 of the time. But over there, they're really happy. So <clears throat> the angels describe that in heaven, there are different locations for the animals. And they all come in to help us. They come to help lift our vibrational frequency and learn and grow with us. Mm -hmm. And I think the animals really do, I mean, they just love us unconditionally, similar to how the angels describe that they love us unconditionally. Another mm -hmm. question that people ask is, do animals have guardian angels as well? And in my experience, when um, mm -hmm. I have been channeling the animals yes you bet they do um, I see and hear the guardian angel of the animal that is uh, there and I can communicate with the animal soul it's not as detailed as if I were to communicate with a soul a human soul but the guardian angel of that animal also fills in a lot of information for me. And I just find that really fascinating when I am connecting. Um, ultimately, you know, from my experience, not many of the animals are hanging around earthbound. <clears throat> and if they do, it's only for a certain period of time. And then they they need to cross over like the angels say they must cross over so have you had any experiences other than ninja coming to you at all i've never had animals mm -hmm. come to me i've mm -hmm. only um channeled when a person asks about their animal then i have channeled the information coming through in that way but i've never had any of my, I, I feel like the pets that have crossed over for myself have already crossed over. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the case. Like yeah. what I experienced in Ninja was really, really unique. Yeah. Because even thinking about some of the other pets that I've had since him, when they passed on, and some of them in very different ways, um, they just went just, on, yeah, and yeah. I remember like sitting there like with a, another one of the cats that I was really quite close to, and her death was really devastating to me. Um, and yet, unlike with Ninja, um, I was sitting there and trying to feel little Mizumi, and <laughs> yeah. I love that name. I know. Cute. Uh, but she was a firecracker. She <laughs> ran around getting all the birds and the mice and racing across roads and up to where <laughs> <laughs> she's wearing everything. She was such a wild cat. 
<laughs> oh, That's so cute. Yeah, some of the some of the names that we had, uh, our first cat. Uh, just kept coming around the house, and finally, you know, my mom came, <laughs> and we and we called her Misty, and then um, the second cat again kept coming around the house, and my mom caved, <laughs> and we called her Marble because she was white and uh, brown patches and dark gray patches, and she looked like a marble, um, and then we got Tuffy. <laughs> Love Man, he was so cute. So cute. So smart. Oh. I remember uh, he, somehow he jumped up on a chair and he got the... We were about to do a barbecue. So <clears throat> back then when I ate meat and he got this big steak and he was running for his life with it. You know, you're like, oh, you little... <laughs> <laughs> and you know, even on his last day, on his last legs... Um, you know, we were putting it off to put him down because we I just was couldn't handle that. That would have been knocking things over the edge for me at that time. I had health issues and and uh you know, so I was like, No, I can't handle losing Tuffy. Forget about it. Uh <clears throat> but then I think something further was happening where, you know, he couldn't he was having a hard time, really hard time breathing, so we just knew, you know, with the incontinence and the now he can't breathe. We just were trying to get him in to, you know, give him some peace to put him down. Thank God we can do that for animals. <clears throat> but I remember going to A and W and getting a burger and fries. <laughs> and I was like, I don't care. I'm getting a burger and fries. And there was Tuffy begging for so. So it was his last meal, you know. I gave him a little couple pieces of hamburger. He <laughs> was having a hard time eating that because he was having a hard time breathing. And and I said, you know, it's his last hurrah. And you know, I just want to make him happy. And. I'm just so thankful that these beings of light and love are here with us on the earth plane. Mm -hmm. And I really feel like it's so important to take care of all of the animals on the planet in any which way that we can, every single possible way. Yeah, um, of all the different charities that are out there, I always go to the oh, RSBCA. Yeah. Always, 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 it's yep. SPCA. That's the one that I'm drawn to the most. Like, yep. <laughs> animals are, they are like our other halves yep. so much so because each of them has such a unique role and part to play in teaching us so many different things or helping mm -hmm. us out with different things. And even if like with the pets that my parents still have and I don't get to see them really often and <laughs> that's sad sometimes mm -hmm. even from that distance just knowing that they're over there and they're with my family over there is a comfort unto yeah. itself and yeah. knowing that oh good they do yeah. still have this sweet little cat named Ryuki who's like this big fluffy kind of dragon <laughs> cat <laughs> <laughs> and they've got him looking after them and him to like draw more joy and love and play from so even if you're not able to actually be physically with them they're just yeah they're amazing so who's the cutie pie in the thumbnail because uh, everybody's gonna see this thumbnail and you're holding that little cutie pie yeah well that is ryuki the one i was just talking about okay <laughs> So he's the one who's he's currently... He's a big boy. Yep. He is really big. He's probably like ha hanging on to him like he's a one-year-old. Oh my gosh. He is so big. He's not like a fat cat. He's just a really, really muscly cat. Yeah. Really muscly. Like really muscly. Oh my gosh. So much so. Especially compared to um, the cat we had just before him, Mei Ling, who is so tiny. And she was like this delicate little princess. <laughs> I love that. Which was really cute. You're, the names you guys are choosing for your pets are awesome. I mean, really, yeah, I would love to cute. see all of your guys' names of mm -hmm. your pets in the description box below. I would absolutely love that, just to see the names. I just think it's so cute. 
another yeah. uh, you know another way to donate um for me uh you choose to sell uh, sorry um you've chosen spca i've chosen um the company that uh, made the uh film the cove now that's a pretty intense video to watch mm -hmm. but it is very informational it is um showcasing what is happening in a cove in japan with the dolphins there which is not good um so y you know i highly recommend watching it um and after that i went and sent 75 dollars to that company in hopes that they could film more and help the dolphins and educate people as to what's going on there so it's all animals globally um, mm -hmm. I think it's really important to help them in every possible way. I love it when, you know, we're hearing a lot of uh, movie stars recently going to Korea and saving, you know, many dogs, you know, from the uh, the con cons consummation of, mm -hmm. you know, the animals there and they are saving them from these, you know, dog farms. I just absolutely love hearing that. So, moving forward, um, you know, if anyone is interested in learning the beginners, the basics of mediumship, we have our course coming up with six mediums coming up September 15th until the 30th of September only going to be $125 US. Um, you can go to my website, kristendaviesmedium.com, and you can sign up if you'd like or read more about it, uh, more detail. Um, <clears throat> uh, uh, through my website, the beauty there is uh, payment can be sent through credit, credit card or PayPal. And um, it's just going to be really fun getting together in a private group and interacting with each other on mm -hmm. camera, off camera, with our decks of cards, learning how to communicate with our team of angels. I think that that overall in my lifespan so far is the greatest gift that has ever happened mm -hmm. in my life, being able to communicate with spirits. So much, so much. And then you can communicate with mm -hmm. your animals directly anytime mm -hmm. you wish because Spirit is omnipresent and you can connect with whomever you wish whenever you wish. The only times when I cannot communicate with spirit is they're in a resting place where they're resting and I'm not to bother them at that time, but then I'm communicating with their guardian angel who's communicating mm -hmm. with me. Or they're in a classroom setting and I'm not to interrupt for too long. <laughs> they're like I'm in class, literally. <laughs> and uh, so they'll chat with me for a few minutes, but then uh, they have to get back to learning, uh, whatever they're mm -hmm. learning. I don't know exactly that detail, but uh, so it's really mm -hmm. important to connect with the energy that's always here and has always been here and will always be here. We're never alone. We are never alone, mm -hmm. ever. So, and that is a wonderful, mm -hmm. comforting knowing that. And I mm -hmm. want to bring that to the forefront and help as many people as I can, mm -hmm. as I can connect with their high vibrational divine beings of light and love that are with them always. Whether that's your guardian angels, the ascended masters, the archangels, the high vibrational ETs that are in your presence mm -hmm. uh, that are helping you, that you've had in other incarnations, People often ask me, are my star mm -hmm. seed, in my experience, we're all mm -hmm. star seeds. I've never experienced mm -hmm. anyone who's ever just incarnated on earth. It's never happened. And I've asked mm -hmm. the angels, um, are there people that have only incarnated on earth? And they say, not many. And I'm like, okay. So we are all star seeds. And we have mm -hmm. ET energies from other lifetimes that we have incarnated with whether it's Pleiadians, Octurians, Syrians, yeah. Orions. I've, Orions. I've only met mm -hmm. a couple uh, that have had gray lifetimes, uh, but they have their loved ones helping them in this pivotal lifetime here on Earth as we mm -hmm. pivot in and towards the light. So it's really, really important 
that we connect with these energies and know what's around us to, to interact and engage. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to show, we are all going to show everyone how to do that. Yeah, and I just wanted to add too mm -hmm. that it empowers you so much more. Yeah. Like, I know that before I started actively connecting, it was really just feeling like, oh, this is just chance, or this is just a thought in my head, yeah. or this is just a feeling. But knowing that those things that I was always doing were because there's actually all these energies there that are there helping us, supporting us, rooting for us, oh, and yeah. wanting all the highest and best for us, that then when you can start working with them, it's like, awesome, that I am on so a team, awesome. and I'm part of this team, and I have 100% control and experience and excitement, and just even when they're sometimes like, well, we can't tell you the whole picture yet, you know they've got your back, Always. and that you're going to be okay, and not knowing, because yeah, we can't know everything. <laughs> Well, it would make things a little bit boring. Yeah, definitely. Really, they're not really going to tell you everything. Boring. It's coming up. But knowing that you can ask them and be like, "What is coming?" and just that they're there and they've got your back. That is so amazing and so comforting. And then you can sit back and realize, you know what? I don't need to take the reins right now, and I'm going to let them. Um, and watch what happens when you do. Mm -hmm. Most people are set in lack thinking, fear, low vibrational frequency, and they don't give their team, uh, you know, they don't ask them for help. So if you sat back and you just relaxed and let them help you, you would be amazed at what happens. But most of us are like, you know, we got our walls up. We're just focused, you know, in our 3D experience. So there's a lot to be learned. There's a lot of growth to be had, and I can't wait for that. You know, we're going to be doing pre-recorded material, ebook, mm -hmm. coming on live, coming on live with students mm -hmm. in this private space. It's very high vibrational, and I'm really excited yeah. for it. Yeah, it's community, and yeah. that's honestly the best that's thing. That's the best part, is connecting with so many mm -hmm. online, and you get to have these long-term friendships, and... Connecting mm -hmm. with other light workers, other high vibrational people, you know, the insights and the guidance. Yeah, and then on the other side of knowing that you're not alone, you're not alone here right now in your physical body yeah. because we're all here in this community, and that's probably the best thing about this particular course oh, yeah. is that community. Bring everybody together. Now, I remember when your guardian angel first <laughs> made his presence known. <laughs> yep. You guys have heard this probably before in my previous uh, material with you, mm -hmm. but on my on my YouTube channel. But um, he came on so hot and heavy, strong with me. He really wanted to get through to her because she wasn't listening, and he was yeah. trying. But you were like, me, 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 I'm not yeah. listening. And um, and I was like, oh, you know, I'm having her over at my house for the first time, and I'm thinking to myself, I don't really want to divulge. Hey. Uh, your guardian angels got a message for you and uh, I thought okay I'm just and he knew this too right because I was thinking it I was thinking okay I'm just gonna ignore this and he leaned in and he's like and don't think you're gonna be ignoring me because I won't be easing off of you until you do relay my message mm -hmm. and I was like okay so I basically what I did was I relayed the message uh, to you <laughs> Which took about 30 minutes. He had a lot to say. It was intense. It was really intense. At that point, too, he'd even, like, put so much energy on me yeah. that I felt myself getting pushed yeah. down. You're not leaving anywhere until you hear my words, which yep. he needed to hear. Mm -hmm. It was guidance that he was trying to get through to her forever. Yeah. And, I, you know, he just really needed uh, things to shift for your highest and best good. Mm -hmm. Needed to move in a certain direction, which it did. Yeah. And it was brilliant. So that wasn't too awkward or anything. I'm like, um, do you want to hear a message? And you were like, 
I think, I guess so. Yeah, sure. <laughs> well, I should go with it because that's my motto half the time. If something weird shows up, let's go with it. I'm like, eh, I was thinking to myself, she says no, I don't know what I'm going to do here. I think I'm just going to have to relay anyways because he, mm -hmm. you know, he, he's, he's assertive. So, yeah, he needed to get um, some guidance through to you, which was really important. And then from that point forward, you went from, you know, kind of unconsciously uh, sensing things and then ignoring them to purposely picking up on things and uh, channeling the guidance. And the mm -hmm. guidance that they have is incredible. Yeah, it makes my jaw drop Me all too. the time. And amazing. Sometimes I'm just like, I can barely hang on with I'm just like, the amazingness and, and the, the word, power. And the words the they words. use? Like, not words I use. Yeah, no, half the time not even with me, and I've got yeah. a pretty good vocabulary. Sometimes they'll use a word, and then I have to look it up on Google as to what it means, and they're, and they're just kind of chuckling at me. <laughs> Is it such an elaborate word? And I'm like, oh. <laughs> so um, I'm really happy you guys joined us to learn, uh, you know, our experiences, um, to hear our uh, guidance as far as what we've seen and experienced mm -hmm. with where our love, our, 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 our fur babies yeah. that we love and where they go. They are so looked after, mm -hmm. um, and so loved over there. And, uh, and, I, and I'm just so happy to know that it's very mm -hmm. comforting to know that. So I hope you guys have a wonderful day and, yeah. uh, we will see you Manana. Yeah. See you all later. Bye. Bye.